am off to Trader Joe's because I gotta get some more stuff to write our book. Derek is laying in bed. What else would he be doing? Do you do anything else but just lay here? No, I can't. Derek, Dewey, lazy ass, and then the laziest one of them all. Hey. <laughs> he is definitely the laziest one. It's like a vampire. Bye. Have fun. I have to show you guys our new chopping block though because this thing is ridiculous. Look how big it is. Oh my gosh, so beautiful though. Chop tons of veggies on here. Anyways, I gotta go get a couple things for the ebook that I'm writing and then we need more potatoes because I've been eating a huge batch of fries every single day and I'm completely addicted to them and I think for the rest of my life I'm gonna have fries every single day <laughs> because I have mastered the fry technique and I will show you guys that in today's video, so keep watching. All right, I'm done at Trader Joe's. I forgot my phone though, which had my list on it. So I don't even know if I got everything I needed, but we'll see when we get home. All right, I still can't find my phone. I don't know where it is. Here's what I got though. So I got a bag of organic potatoes, this low-fat granola cereal, a thing of almond breeze. I'm gonna take this, well maybe not that, but I'm gonna take this to uh, Portland with me. We got some roasted corn, some veggies, Carolina gold sauce, and then jalapeno sauce. All right, Derek doesn't feel super great today, so it's just gonna be me and Dewey in the vlog today. Yeah, say hi. Anyways, we're gonna make the best fries ever. Oh, we wanna preheat our oven to 450. I have recommended other temperatures so many different times. I've done like 400, 425, and then go to 450 and then broil it. Just do it on 450 and they come out perfect every single time. 450 for 30 minutes on like the baking racks that we use on these and they come out every single time perfect. But it's not just in the cooking that you need to be concerned about. We also need the perfect seasoning. We are gonna add a sprinkle of each of these. I probably use quarter of a teaspoon of both of these and then half a teaspoon of each of these and then I also use about quarter of a teaspoon of salt. It's all in the salt. The salt is what makes it honestly taste like fries you'd get at a restaurant. So I got all my seasonings in here and then I literally just shake it until they're well coated. And then we are gonna pop these in the oven for 30 minutes. And here they are 30 minutes later. You ready for the puppy bark, Dewey? How's those blueberries? These are like the best blueberries I've ever had. Nice. So today has been a little bit of a sick day for me. Like literally the last couple days, like when I woke up in the morning, I was like blowing my nose a lot of like... Blem. A lot of gross stuff. And then today I actually had like a headache. I never get headaches. So I'm, it's like when you're vegan or you, you eat like a healthy whole food plant based diet. Like for me getting sick is like instead of like, you know, being in bed all day, it's like, uh, yeah, I got a little bit of a headache and I don't feel 100%. I feel like 80%. So I'd give it like an 8 today. And <laughs> I just had to throw that in there. You just said, if you just said like, like 30, like, 30 yeah. like times. 30 like times. So today hasn't been very exciting. It's just been me. Shopping and making fries with Dewey. Mm -hmm. What we wanted to talk about. We'll get it right. This is the eighth time we've done this take. <laughs> is what we see in the group a lot, which is people, you know, trying to promote veganism as this like perfection, ideal, elitist club that like you have to be 100%, you know, following all these rules to be vegan or whatever. Because in the group, there's so many people transitioning and stuff. And there's so many vegans that are in the group that are just obviously die hard because you know they're animal activists and stuff like that which is fine and we all want to end the suffering of animals but 
we used to just see people not being very supportive at all for people on their journeys and it's like I think a lot of people forget you know that we were all meat eaters or standard American diet eaters at once and if people were just bashing us and telling us we weren't doing everything right or we weren't doing it good enough or being vegan enough we yeah. never would have probably gotten to where we are. You know? Exactly. Typically what happens is like the vegan, like the vegans, I'm singling at some of the, the die-hard vegans is that they will be, you know, very rude and disrespectful um, to the people that are, you know, express, are, that are expressing concern. Maybe they binged on something and, you know, like, you know, a lot of shit happens. And, and they, the, they're coming, you know, they're confessing it to the group because they want help how, on not, how to not do it again. And like, you know, they're like, this happened, how do I not do this again? Yeah, and some people talk about how they actually have like addictions to certain foods, which is totally legitimate. Um, and just by saying, well, you're not thinking about the animals, that's not always the best response because it's people not, can, maybe, maybe they, yeah. Be, people they, can have legitimate addictions to food. Like, so many people have binge eating disorder or dairy is one of the most addictive foods on the planet. I mean, that's just one of the reasons. But a lot of people, people are in the group because they want to learn and they want to have a supportive community or whatever. And a lot of times, more than not, we'll see people that are just trying to be the best vegan in the world. And so what typically happens is a lot of these really die-hard vegans, they get going on their, their train of like being very pretentious and being very rude and disrespectful to people. And eventually what happens is it just alienates people. It makes vegans look crazy and yeah. very just like out there and yeah. Like that's one reason why we try to like say plant-based more often because there's such a negative connotation um, to the word vegan. Yeah. That's why restaurants here in Tucson call themselves vegetarian restaurants even though they're vegan. They call them vegetarian restaurants because there is a negative connotation with, with the word vegan. vegan. So it really kind of just comes down to how you speak to people and if you, because like a lot of the vegans they come across as being just total dicks. And if you're trying to influence somebody in a positive way, and you're trying to make them like change and be like, look at this great way of living, right? It's like, instead of being a dick and being so blunt and so brutal, like people just get turned off right away because that's not necessarily how most people are gonna, are gonna actually make a change. People love to be respected. People love to be complimented on the things that they are doing good. I'm not saying don't, I'm not saying compliment people on their binges or anything like that if they eat animal food. It's like binge people that they're actually trying to learn how to eat a plant-based vegan diet and just be a nice, kind, respectful person. And then people will treat you back with that type of like kindness and respect. So it kind of goes both ways. And people will be like, well, they're not being respectful and kind to the animals that they're slaughtering. It's like most people do not make the ethical connections. So you have, you have to talk to people in the language that they understand. And most people are going to eat a whole food plant based vegan diet for health and for weight loss. That's the primary reason. They're not doing it for the ethical part. Maybe they will learn the ethical connection later, but primarily it is for health and it is for weight loss. So you have to speak to them in that way because that's the language that they understand. Check out the book, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Never ever in that book, which is probably the best book if you want to learn how to persuade and influence people, does he say to condemn people and make them feel like shit about themselves. He says like compliment them, you know, listen to them, understand them. Yeah. When people feel understood, then they feel like they're being heard and then they're much more open to actually hearing what you have to say. Plus you're like trying to undo an entire lifetime's worth of beliefs. Like that they've been taught that they need all these like animal products and stuff. So it's just a huge feat to like undo, you know? All we can do is like educate them. So people just forget a lot of times that like obviously we have to show compassion to the animals and that's great but we also have to show more compassion to the humans because they are the ones that are going to be able to change the world like the animals are just victims like they can't do anything it doesn't matter how much you love them and what want to save them you have to show compassion to the humans because they're the ones that make the food choices so just think about that the next time you leave like a comment yeah. or like somebody wants help or they screwed up or they don't understand where you're coming from 
because you were once in that same position that they were in and you were totally lost and like think about the people that helped you and how you educated yourself because we need to like help people just get a better understanding. Mm -hmm. Just be nice to people. Be understanding and listen to them and then they will actually respond to you in a positive way and then it doesn't turn into nasty arguments which happens all the time on Facebook and it's like children bickering with each other. It's, it's usually kind of humorous um, for me to watch but it's kind of like this isn't really effective and it's not really helping. It's just egos clashing and then nothing really gets accomplished. So, All right, we will catch you guys on the next vlog. Dewey is loving the dirt over here right now. Yeah, rolling the dirt, buddy. We'll catch you guys on the next vlog. Talk to you soon. Peace.